Math Ninja here. So last time we talked about uniformly continuous functions. It is much more strict than continuous functions. Because instead of just fixing one point <coughs> and checking it for all those points, one of them fix, we now have to check every pair. So this is much more strict. But note that uniformly continuous functions implies continuity. <coughs> because since it works for every pair, we just fix one of them. So it works for continuous, so it is continuous. But it's not the other way around though. For example, 1 over x, that is continuous. But it is not uniformly continuous. <coughs> now there's many examples of uniformly continuous functions. In fact, we have a jump, we have a ton. Because remember, the uniform continuity function, the uniform continuity theorem, if we have a function that is continuous on a compact set, then it's also uniformly continuous on the same contact set, compact set. So, <coughs> but there's also a giant class, which is well known to be uniformly continuous, known as Lipschitz functions. So my friend, his name is Adam Berger. He's uh, writing his honors thesis about this subject. And Lipschitz function, very important, very important. So a Lipschitz function is a function f that goes from metric space with metric d, metric space with md to n row n has to fulfill. So f has to be is one to one. <coughs> Actually, no, it does not. This has to fulfill, I'm, I'm thinking about assign, assign, isometry, very sorry. So it has to fill this row of f of x, comma, f of y. Don't worry, I'll talk about isometry later. Is less than d of x, or less than d of x, comma, y, multiplied by b, where b is greater than zero. And this less than equal to, and this is true for any x comma y in m. <coughs> so you can see from the definition, this function f is Lipschitz. That's a funny name, Lipschitz. I'm very sorry. Let's see. Can you see? Mm. So this function is Lipschitz. And you can see straight off the bat that this function is uniformly continuous. And the way you can see this, <coughs> let's just set delta, let's just set <coughs> uh, delta equal to uh, epsilon over b. Yeah. <coughs> so whenever d x comma y is less than delta, then rho f x comma f y is less than <coughs> is less than just cancel out the b's cancel out <coughs> yeah and this guy's just gonna be less than that one <coughs> So yes, you can see. Can you see? Yep. So yes, you can see right away that this is that the function Lipschitz function is uniformly continuous. So another type of function that we like is known as an isometry. So this is f that takes m comma d to n comma rho is an isometry. If the right blocking forward, yes I am. If F is one to one and onto, meaning it's a bijection, and row 
of f of x comma f y equals distance x comma y for any x comma y in f. <coughs> so this is definition isometry. And from this, we build something called an isometric embedding. <coughs> oh, by the way, if I make any mistakes, please, please email me or send me a YouTube message. I think I may purposely make one or two obvious mistakes. Or so I say. And I am curious if anyone will respond. Because I didn't know people actually watch these videos. In fact, a young gentleman, I should send him a thank you. He just sent me an email saying how much he really liked the ninja style of math. So I, I should thank him later. But watch if I make a mistake. Because maybe early in this lecture, I may have made a mistake. So watch. Never trust... Uh, never trust anyone. Don't trust professors because they all lie. Don't trust people. Always, the path to truth is not to trust truth. So, it, that, 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 that is true. So, an isometri isometric embedding. Mm. Much better. An isometric embedding. It takes, so we're going to take a function that is isometric to its image. So it doesn't have to be on two. And it's going to be, a, it's going to be isometric to its image, which is a subset of the range. <coughs> so it's going to be an isometric mapping that's going to be embedded into the range. <coughs> so isometric embedding. <laughs> It's a function from m comma uh, d to m comma rho. F is an isometric map onto the uh, f of m. Yeah. <coughs> and you can see. This is isometric embedding. Now, in more advanced courses, you will see that this is important because this, this is the key to completing many spaces. And remember, definition of complete. Every Cauchy sequence in that space converges to a point in that space. So, very important. <coughs> but, we will not be talking about that, at least not today. Maybe during Thanksgiving break. If I, if I am not too far. So, let's go back. We made a quick a tangent, but let's go back to the... Well, first I have to stop this. But we will go back to differentiability. Mm. 